Welcome to AP Podcast 16.5. This has to do with entropy changes that we see in a chemical reaction. And when you're looking at these kind of reactions, what you want to notice is uh, how many moles of gas you have on the reactant side versus how many moles of gas you have on the product side. And so if we look at this reaction we have right here, you can see we've got two moles of, of this gas right here and seven moles of, of oxygen. So that gives us a total of nine moles of gas on this side. And then over here we've got four moles of gas and six moles of gas. So we have 10 moles of gas of products. So as this reaction's going, the amount of disorder or the amount of entropy that's occurring is greater on the product side. There are more positions uh, on the product side than there is on the reactant side. So therefore, S is positive in this reaction. And so let's look at a couple other examples and see if we can't figure out how to do these, these problems. Okay, so we're going to predict the sign of the uh, entropy for each of the reactions. Now again, this little zero right here, that tells us that are, they're under standard conditions, right? All right, so we've got thermal decomposition of a solid. Now, if we look at this, we've got the solid state here, solid state there, and then over here we've got gas. So if we were just to look at it from this standpoint, we've got no gas on this side and some gas on this side. So I think it's pretty intuitive that this side right here, uh, there is more uh, positions that the molecules could be in because of the gas. So as this reaction goes, the, the sign of S is positive. It's more disordered on the product side than it would be on the reactant side. Now let's look at the oxidation of uh, sulfur dioxide in air. We've got two moles of gas, three moles of gas on this side, and on this side we only have two moles of gas. Okay, So what we have here is it's getting more ordered and therefore, the sign of S is negative. Okay? So there's less disorder, and so the entropy decreases in that reaction. Well, let's move on. Now, pause the video, take a moment, and see if you could predict the sign uh, for the entropy for each of the following changes, and see how you do. All right, let's see how you did. Now, we've got in this situation, we've got some solid sodium and some chlorine gas turning into a solid. Okay, So the change in this one is going to be negative. Okay, S is decreasing. This reaction is getting more ordered. What about this one? We've got one mole of gas and three moles of gas uh, combining to make two moles of gas. So again, this is also getting more ordered. The disorder or the entropy is decreasing, so that's a negative sign there. Now we've got a solid, and we are breaking up the solid into two uh, ions. So we've got aqueous state, and we've got solid state. So in this case, this reaction, uh, we are getting more disorder, so the sign of the reaction, or the sign of S, is positive. And then this one, we've got a solid going to a liquid. Again, this is locked in in a lattice, you know, locked in rigidly, whereas a liquid, they can flow. All right. So the amount of disorder in this case is greater in the product side, and so we've got a positive sign. All right, on to the next one. So here we come to our third and final law of thermodynamics, and that is that the entropy or the disorder of a pure crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. It's a very, pretty important thing. The reason it does is it gives us a starting point. So we can compare all sorts of molecules to a crystal at zero degrees Kelvin, which means it's not moving, there's no vibration, there's no rotation, and therefore the amount of entropy is zero. So everything else from that starting point has to be greater than zero. So when we look at that, uh, oh, and here, I don't want to forget this, standard entropies, that's what that little zero sign is, 298K1 atmosphere. Okay? And then look at this equation that's given to us. Okay? To find the change in S, we take the sum of the products minus sum of the reactions. We can do that because uh, entropy is a state function. In other words, the pathway does not matter. We're only worried about the initial and the final conditions. Right? And we'll do that. We'll go ahead and look up some numbers in our appendix and figure out what uh, the value for the change in, in uh, entropy is. And then last but not least, more complex molecules have a higher 
entropy. So let's imagine something like a little methane molecule, CH. So we've got a methane right there, right? Okay. So that molecule has a certain amount of, uh, I don't know, I guess positional entropy. It can rotate, it can vibrate. And comparing that to something, another hydrocarbon, an ethane. Okay. This thing right here is a more complex molecule, so its S value, its uh, entropy value, would be greater um, than this value right here. All right? So here we go. Let's calculate. Look at this problem. Predict and calculate the delta S for the reaction and use the table in uh, eight. A21. So if you have your book, you can use it. If not, you're just going to have to write down the values. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and write it all out. And then uh, you can look at my answer and see if it matches what you got. All right, you can see what I did here. I got a, a value of a negative 149 joules per Kelvin. And just as a little review of what I did, I went ahead and <clears throat> took the products minus the reactants from the value in the book. So I've got two moles of SO2, which has a uh, uh, entropy value of 248 joules per Kelvin mole, plus the two uh, moles of nickel oxide, 38, minus the two moles of nickel sulfide, and the three moles of oxygen gas. So add those two, subtract those, you get a negative 149. Now this value, okay, this negative S, uh, means that somehow this reaction is becoming more ordered or the, the amount of entropy is decreasing. So let's go and look at our reaction and see if that makes sense. Okay, I've got two moles of this solid here and two moles of that solid right there. So I can kind of think of those as canceling each other out. And over here I've got three moles of gas decreasing to two moles of gas. So if I were to have asked you to predict that, you would have went ahead and predicted uh, that the value for S would be negative. So this kind of just proves what we've been doing. So we'll look at these. We'll do some more of these in class. And uh, if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask. See you next time.